welcome back in this video we are going to take some numerical examples and uh, we will see the um, we'll try to simulate the results that we had seen in our previous video so just to recap um, we had seen that um, when we do the down sampling then um, basically it kind of um, uh, reduces the number of points in the spectrum by the down sampling factor but when it reduces the number of points um, what we had seen was that as long as there uh, the number of points which are sitting along the fault lines or the near the fault lines are all zeros and as long as the down sampling factor is such that the pull the effect of the pull is up to this point then nothing is going to happen to my spectrum otherwise uh, we are going to see the aliasing effect um, we'll address that issue in our other videos um, but the currently um, what we need to take care uh, is that we need to think of the fault line and we need to uh, imagine that when we do the down sampling by that particular factor then it is the effect is as good as pulling the spectrum around the this fault line or in other words you can see that um, the fault line moves in this direction okay so when you do the down sampling by factor of 2 this fault line is going to move in this direction so now this guy has come here okay this guy has come here which is now f, f dash of s by 2 and all the points that were sitting here they have got absorbed okay when it moved in this direction so as this guy moves in this direction um, the scale of all the you can consider this as a, some kind of a scale which you are holding and then you're pushing it in this direction okay and all the scales which are multiple of fs fs by 2 basically they will move in this direction and the amount by which they will move in towards your towards left will be the function of the down sampling factor okay and so it just cannot move in this direction of its own because there are the number of points here so what happens is that uh, the points will be absorbed around the fault line so that is uh, another way of thinking of the um, short end rule of thumb of what happens when we do the down sampling in the frequency domain okay but uh, the take that we have um, from these videos or from this understanding is that um, the number of points that we have um, will reduce by the down sampling factor but it should not affect your spectrum it will not affect your spectrum as long as the points are uh, uh, okay this is a special case we will see the aliasing part but assuming that there is no aliasing then it should not affect your spectrum all the points that appear on the indices they appear on the same indices when you do the down sampling okay the index remains the same okay so now let's take uh, one or two numerical examples and uh, let us try to understand this behavior better okay so um, I have got this um, let me try to bring this um, in the capture zone um, so I have got a code and uh, let me try to stretch this it's a bit of a pain um, but okay um, I have got it eventually uh, it seems to be running away okay so this is a this is a small script okay um, a very simple script there is nothing special about it um, so what I'm doing here is I'm generating a sinusoid of 2 Hertz it means that I'm going to have two cycles in one second okay and I'm defining that um, my down sampling factor is going to be 4 right and then I'm saying that okay I have the analog frequency of 2 Hertz I'm going to sample I'm going to sample this uh, analog frequency this is my 1x rate remember this is my 1x rate 1x rate means this this is my 1x rate okay so this is your 1x rate and so if I bring this back again here um, so this is my 80 80 times f this is my 1x rate and that 1x rate I'm going to down sample by factor of 4 okay and then what I'm doing is I'm calculating this n times t1 if you don't understand this n times t1 or time frequency indexing I would recommend that you go to the first or the second videos of this uh, series to understand this because this concept is very important although it is it looks trivial if you understand it um, but it is very important right and you just club these parameters into your sine function and you just just do the plotting okay so let's try to um, run this and see what effect it has um, when we do the down sampling by factor of 4 on a pure sinusoidal tone okay so this is the name of the file okay so now we have got few figures popped up and we'll try to analyze um, uh, each one of them um, one by one so um, this is my figure one right so 
what this figure says let us try to examine what is this figure trying to explain to us oops it is is running away okay so this is the figure right now what this figure says is that I have gotten sinusoid of two cycles which I have defined right two cycles and two cycles and I have said that my sampling frequency is 180 right my sampling frequency is 180 if you see here the sampling frequency um, sorry 160 f is 2 so if you replace here by 2 the f fs1 is 160 so my sampling frequency is 160 it means that I'm going to pick up 160 samples out of my sinusoidal tone which is spanning across two cycles so this is what we have got here so if you see if you examine this figure you'll see that you have got two cycles right and I have got 160 samples if you see these times these are 160 uh, points and so this is in terms of the index points okay um, so just to give a bit more clarity I have indexed um, I have put it in time scale as well so if you see here they are both representing one and the same but now here this is in terms of the time scale in time so in one second I have got two cycles and those two cycles are taking 160 samples I'm picking up 160 samples out of it okay now let us examine what happens um, when I do the downsampling right so let us downsample so we have said that okay I'm going to downsample it by factor of 4 so factor of 4 means out of 160 before it was 160 samples originally it was my 1x rate I am downsampling it by factor of 4 so now my number of samples will be reduced to 40 right the number of samples gets reduced to 40 so um, this is the sinusoid number of samples are 40 spanning only across one second spanning across one second now I only have 40 samples okay so this is the time domain representation of my 1x signal of my analog signal first then my 1x signal 1x discrete samples and my um, x by 4 discrete samples right now let us examine what happens to it in the frequency domain so now in frequency domain now if you see here I have got a nice sinusoidal tones here right so let us see where what index is this guy is sitting on this guy is sitting on index number uh, 3 okay this guy is sitting on index number 3 if you see the bottom uh, part of the figure uh, there is a marker and that marker moves right it is 3 and it is as expected because we have said that the sinusoid is going to have the frequency of 2 Hertz so when we represent it in the Fourier transform it is always 2 plus 1 the index is 2 plus 1 okay so that is 3 and we know that this is the image of it so and we also know that there is a fault line sitting somewhere here so if this is uh, these are 160 elements so fault line is sitting around sample number 80 okay point number 80 in the frequency domain so this is the spectrum at 1x now let us see what happens when we down sample it right uh, how the spectrum looks like so this is how the spectrum looks like this is the down sample version of it so if you see here here there are 160 samples now it has got reduced to 40 samples because I have reduced it by the factor of 4 right so when you take the Fourier transform then the Fourier transform also is going to have 40 samples so 40 samples but again let us examine where the sinusoidal tone is sitting the tone is at the same point if you see the index does not change okay so what has happened what has happened here so um, what actually has happened is around the fault line the fault line has absorbed so by the factor of 4 okay so it is 160 uh, by 4 so basically I am uh, how many points it is 100 and uh, 120 points have got absorbed right 120 points have got absorbed across the fault line because originally I had 100 and uh, um, I had 160 samples which I downsampled by factor of 4 so that gave me 40 samples so how many samples I have lost it is 160 minus 40 that is 120 so around this fault line I have um, 60 samples going getting absorbed from this part of the spectrum and the 60 samples getting absorbed from this part of the spectrum okay so this is what I'm going to get so the absorption is going to happen around the um, the fault line okay and this is how the spectrum looks like now let us examine um, let us take another example where we have the band limited signal rather than having a pure sinusoidal tone and let us try to examine how it is going to look like so this is a another script which I have written again it's a very straightforward 
um, script mm. okay so now here what happens is um, if you don't understand this part um, a, a, it's not important um, to you for you to understand at this moment in time but what I'm trying to do is I am trying to uh, define a band limited signal in the frequency domain and this guy is going to return to me the impulse response um, but you don't need to be bothered about if you don't understand any of these um, I will explain it to you when we take up these uh, uh, subjects later right so technically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to generate a band limited signal which is similar to this guy okay which is similar to this guy the one which I have produced here in the figure and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to downsample it by a factor of two okay and if I do the downsampling by factor of two then uh, after doing that I'm just simply plotting the time domain and the frequency domain samples so um, let us examine um, when we simulate this how it looks like so the name of the file is downsampling ideas I think yeah so let us run this okay so now we have got few figures popped up here as well and let us try to analyze them one by one okay so these are the frequency domain samples so okay this is the time domain one right this is the time domain guy mm. okay so um, let me open the two time domain signal samples this is spanning across so this is one second okay this is one second and uh, where is my this is figure one and this is figure two okay so here now I have re I have removed that uh, indexing in terms of the samples okay I'm just representing in terms of time and so ba technically basically what I'm saying is I have got a signal right and it is spanning across and this is how the signal is going to look like in the time domain um, you need not to be bothered why the signal is looking like this um, but just um, uh, for a short explanation when I have a signal like this then I will get the spectrum uh, similar to the one which I have um, shown in the example okay so I have got the figure one is my original one x-rate and the figure two is I have down sample the number of samples are half okay although it is spanning across one second only but the number of samples I pick up are half the uh, samples which I have here and let us examine what happens in the time domain uh, in the frequency domain so um, let me uh, pull out the plots of the frequency domain so these are the frequency domain plots and as you can see um, I have got two figures here so the first figure okay so I have got around 800 samples I have got around 800 samples so this is um, this time domain signal has got around 800 samples okay so when I, I'm taking the Fourier transform 800 points and this is how the spectrum looks like and the fault line is sitting around 400 okay so this is my original this this is these are the frequencies that are contained inside my analog signal so up to this point is of interest to us these are all the image frequencies now when I do the downsampling when I do the downsampling see what happens now this point is point number 400 okay so um, around the fault line basically the signal has got pulled or you can see imagine it as the fault line has moved in this direction absorbing all the points that are sitting around here and the FS this this point that FS that also has moved in this direction and all the points have got absorbed around the fault line okay you can see it in that context now this is how the uh, spectrum looks like now we need to establish the fact that we have not lo we have not lost any of the samples okay all the samples should be exactly same so that is another point that we I wanted to emphasize so um, in order to do that um, I think we have to check the values individually okay so um, let us just try to plot few uh, uh, we'll try to print few points okay so here if you see um, y1 is my original signal in time okay and uh, okay so I have taken the Fourier transform so y1 is equal to down sample version of this guy okay so y1f is the frequency domain samples right y1f and y2f right so um, let us try to print the values and let us examine whether they are same or not okay so um, this is my octave so y1f okay so y1f 
and let us say let us print around 20 odd samples let us print around 20 odd samples okay this is how it looks like um, but I don't want in this way I wanted something like this okay so this is the uh, spectrum that I have this is the spectrum I have of my originally sampled 1x signal okay which is basically um, the blue one which is basically this guy and now I want to see how it looks like when I do the down sampling so down sampling is y2f okay and what I'll do is I will scale it up by the factor of d um, and I'm, I'm doing the scaling up by factor of d is because when I do the down sampling the number of points that I have are reduced by the factor of 2 okay so when you go to the Fourier uh, when you see the Fourier transform the magnitude also gets reduced by the factor of 2 so if I want to compare the two things against each other I have to scale up the down sampled spectrum so that I can compare them equivalently okay so that is what I'm doing here and um, okay so let us see whether the points are same or not oops um, something has happened uh, okay it's um, okay and I need to do the multiplication like this so I'm picking 20 samples and then multiplying by the factor of D okay so now let us see um, whether the points are same or not okay I'm not able to cover them on the same uh, figure but let me try to stretch it a bit and see whether we can capture both the points together under the same screen so yeah so now as you can see the first point is 0.99499 right second point is 98987 this is 98987 um, this is one this is 9970 and all zeros 88 all zeros 8780 last one is 87 82 so as you can see the signal integrity is maintained okay we are not losing the signal we do not lose the signal only thing that happens is that the number of points that I use to represent the signal has got reduced by the down sampling factor okay so this is the take from this video and um, what we'll do is um, I will stop here and we will examine the aliasing effect okay this is a very important point so um, the whole purpose of producing all these videos is actually boiling down to the aliasing effect of the down sampling okay so that video is very important and I think that uh, I should uh, make a separate video so that we can discuss it in more details so I will see you in the next video and I hope you have enjoyed this